Okay, so we're starting section 4.3. These are on logarithmic functions, and we'll see what those are in a little bit. Um, so let's start with an example. Um, so you know, for example, how to solve the following equation. Right, suppose you have x to the power 3 equals um, 64. So if you want to know what x is, you want to undo the 3, right? You want the inverse of the cube function, which is the cube root function, right? So you take the cube root of 64, and you get 4, right? And you can check if you take 4 to the power 3, you get 64. So it works, right? So 4 is the solution. Okay, so you've all done this before, right? This is nothing new. Now, let's do one that probably is new, probably one that you have not done before. So example two, suppose we want to solve um, 3 to the x equals 64. Hmm. So notice the difference here. Before, x was the base, 3 was the exponent. Now, 3 is the base, x is the exponent. So this is probably something you have not seen before. Um, up until now, we've never had to solve for the exponent, right? The exponent has never been an unknown, a variable, right? Up until now, the exponents have been, well, nice whole numbers, right? Well, I should say up until the, the, last, the last video, 4.2, we talked about exponential functions, right? Like 2 to the x, or e to the x, or 10 to the x, right? These are exponential functions, Right? And we saw what those are in, in 4.2. That was on your, your last test. Uh, but now we kind of want to reverse it, right? We want to we wanna find the exponent of 3 that gives us 64. Okay, so that, that's kind of a hard problem. So let's see. Uh, let's guess 4, right? Is, could it be 4? So x equals 4. Well, let's check. If I replace x with 4, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. And so that doesn't work. It's not 64, right? So no, x is not 4. But since 81 is bigger than 64, maybe we went too high, right? Maybe I, I only picked 4 because that was the answer in the previous problem, right? But we know it's not the same equation. We don't expect to get the same answer. Uh, so let's back off. Let's try, let's just try 3, right? What if x is 3? So if I take 3 to the power 3, I get 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So that's still wrong. Uh, yeah, so that's still not 64. Okay, so it's not 4, it's not 3. However, 64 is between these two numbers, right? 27 and 81. Between 27 and 81 is 64. So it's reasonable to assume now that whatever this x is here, right? Because if we get 3 to the 3, we only get 27. If we have 3 to the 4, we're past that. Now we're, now we're at 81. So, so somewhere between 3 and 4 should be the solution. So we can, we can make a guess. We can say maybe it's 3.5, right, or 3.6, right? And we can play the same game, right? Um, what is 3 to the power 3.5? Now that I can't do in my head. That you need a calculator for, right? Because that's an exponential function, right? So if you do 3 to the power 3.5, my calculator says that that is approximately, because again, it's, it's one of those infinite decimals here, right? 46.765 dot, dot, dot. Um, but that's not 64 either, so obviously that's a wrong guess. Well, so it's got to be bigger than 3.5, right? Maybe 3.6 or 3.7. Okay. So the point is, you know, we're, we're just going to keep guessing, and we can get a better and better approximation by doing that, but it's, it's tedious, right? There's got to be a better way to solve this equation without having to guess like we're doing here, right? So that's, that's why we use what's called a logarithm, right? When we want to solve for the exponent, and we don't want to just guess at it, Right? We need a way to represent the exponent in terms of the 3 and the 64. Okay, And so here's how we're going to do it. 
um, we're going to say that if, when you have b, so b is the base, and let's say n is the exponent. That's the thing we're looking for, right? That's the x in this case. Let's say b to the n is equal to some other number n. Okay. And what we would like to do is figure out what n is in terms of b and n, right? Right, so it's not the nth root, right? Because we're not solving for b here, we're solving for the exponent. So, you know, you can come up with your own crazy way to write this, but the, the conventional way, the way that mathematicians write the, the, the answer here is we use what's called a logarithm. So this is gonna be, let me try that again. This is gonna be log. So L-O-G just is short for logarithm of m, right? Because we want to know this in terms of in terms of m. But we have to express, well, what the base was, right? Here it was 3, but it could be 4 or 5 or 2 or e, right? Or 10. It could, right? b is just a number. In this case, it's 3. But in general, we're going to write the base right below the g here to indicate that it's base b. OK? So these are equivalent, right? This is the thing you have to remember inside and out, backwards and forwards, right? Because that is going to allow us to solve, right, for x now. So now, example 3, or sorry, this is still example 2, rather. We want to solve 3 to the x equals 64, right? That was our goal. Now we have a mechanism for doing that, right? We have this notation here. So my n is just x. Right? We have log, L-O-G, our b, our b here was 3, that's a g, and our m, our m was this 64, right? So b was 3, right, n is x, and m is 64. So we're taking the log of 64, and you can use parentheses, the book usually doesn't, but we're taking the log of 64 base 3. Okay, so, so there's our solution, right? The solution is, for better or worse, log base 3 of 64. Right. Parentheses are optional. Right. And now you might complain that that's just not, right? what is this? This is, this is just some weird symbol for something that doesn't help me, right? But unfortunately, w sometimes we have to write numbers as symbols. Right. This is nothing new. Right. This is nothing new in the sense that, um, let's do example 3. Right. Suppose you want to solve for x. And the equation is, um, um, let's just do x cubed is equal to 7. Right. So not unlike what we did earlier, x cubed equals 64, but now we have x cubed equals 7. So to undo the exponent of 3, there's no logarithm here, right? We're not solving for 3, we're solving for x. So the inverse of the cube root, or the cube rather, is the cube root, the cube root of 7. Okay? And that's our, that was our solution to this equation. So, you know, by now you're used to this. The cube root of 7 just represents some number, right? What is the cube root of 7? Well, you need a calculator for that. And um, if you give me a second, I'll try to do that. Yeah, it's about 1.9129, right? So approximately 1.9129. Okay, so, so yeah, this symbol here, the cube root of 7, just represents this approximate number. This is the exact number. Oops, sorry, 129, right? So this is the exact way to write the approximate number 1.9129, right? So yes, you're used to symbols representing numbers. And that's all this is. The log base 3 of 64 is just a number. What is that number approximately? Well, we'll get to that later. I mean, we know that it's approximately 3 point something, right? 3.5, well, it's bigger than 3.5, right? So maybe 3.7. 3.7, something like that, right? So this is approximate, 
And not a very precise answer, but you know, this, it's, it's just a guess at this point, right? So yes, like you used your calculator to calculate the cube root of 7, you can use your calculator to calculate log base 3 of 64. So I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Okay, before we do that, let's do another example where we need to use the logarithm up here. So this will be example 4. Solve for, um, let's say, w. And the equation is going to be 10 to the power w minus 2 is equal to 396. Okay, so this is the equation, and we want to solve for w, right? So now we can't just take the the tenth root because that's not the exponent. The exponent is w minus 2. We're solving for the exponent, right? And if you're solving for the exponent, that's the n, the capital N up here, right? So the w, right, if it helps, w minus 2, oops, is the same as capital N, right? The b here is 10, and the m, the thing on the other side of the equation, the m is 396. Okay? So all we have to do to solve for w is write it in terms of a logarithm here, right? So the exponent, w minus 2, is going to be log base b, but b here is 10. So just put a, a little 10 right next to the g, and of m, right? m is the 396. Right. And I'll use parentheses here, right? Right, so that's w minus 2. Now, that's not w, but you know what to do with the 2 here, right? So if w minus 2 is equal to log base 10 of the number 396, how do you solve for w? Well, you do the opposite of subtracting 2, you just add 2. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. That's a plus now, right? And that'll tell us what w is, right? w is going to be 2 plus log base 10 of 396. Sorry, parentheses. Well, you don't need parentheses. I'm just going to write 396, right? And that's the answer. Right? In fact, that's the exact answer. Right? What is it approximately if you want, say, a decimal? Well, use your calculator. Again, I didn't show you how to do that, but I will in just a second. And if you use your calculator, you're going to get 4.597, I'll say 7, right? I'll, we'll round to four decimal places, right? So 4.5977. So that's the approximate answer, and this is the exact answer. Okay. Well, so now... Uh, yeah, so how did I do that? How did I get the approximate using my calculator, right? So that's the next thing we should look at here. So on your, your TI-8084, I'm assuming you have the TI-84. If you have a different calculator, well, look for the button that says L-O-G on it, right? On your TI-84, yep, on your TI-84, it should be right next to the number 7, so to the left of 7, right? And to the next, to the button to the left of 4, you have this button LN. So we'll get to that later. But so LOG is logarithm on your calculator, and LN is also a logarithm, but we'll explain that in just a second. So yeah, what I did on my, on my TI-84 calculator, um, I just put in 2, plus L-O-G, right, so I hit the, the log button, 7, and then I put in, in parentheses, although I don't think you need parentheses, but I'm going to put it there anyway, 396. So when you hit enter, your calculator should spit out 4.5976, whatever, right? Way more digits than you'll ever need. Uh, I stopped at rounding to four decimal places. Right, so one, two, three, four decimal places, right? So... That's how to do that on your calculator.
Now, notice I didn't put the 10 in here, right? How did, I, how did the calculator know that this is base 10? Well, that's what this button is, right? So if you don't write the 10, it's automatically base 10. Right. So let me make that clear here, right? If you just write LOG and you don't see a number, right? You don't see a number here. Well, it means it's base 10. And your calculator does the same thing. This log button here, right, is base 10. You're just, you're just not going to see the 10. Okay. Okay, so keep that in mind. So what does this LN button mean then, right? So LN, LN of x, this is sometimes called the natural logarithm. The natural logarithm is log base e. So you remember what e is? I know it's, it's, been, a, it's been a little while, but it was in 4.2. In 4.2, we talked very briefly about this e number, the e, is just, it's a number, it's about 2.718281828459045 dot dot dot. Right, so it's like pi, it goes on forever. Um, but you don't have to know it because it's in your calculator, right? You can either do second division, or if you do second ln, what happens is it puts e to some power. So then you just have to put in the exponent. Right, so second ln takes e to a power, ln itself takes the logarithm with base e. Okay, so two buttons on your calculator to do logarithms. Now, that doesn't help us with the original question here, what's the log base 3 of 64? Because the log button, the log button, is base 10, not base 3. And the LN button is base E, which is close to 3, but it's not exactly 3. It's 2.7 something, right? So, yeah, on some calculators, on, on my calculator is an older one. I have the TI-83. So if you have the TI-83 or a basic TI-84, you might not be able to do this directly, right? because these calculators uh, only have base 10 and base E. They don't have any other base. So you can't do base 5 or base 2 or base even 3. You can do E or 10, and that's it. Okay? So that means there has to be a way to change the base, right? So let's talk about that. And th this is actually a little premature. They do this in, in section 4.4, uh, I think. But because it comes in very handy, we need the change of base formula. And here it is, right? So if I want to calculate log base 3, so I'll call that b, of some number, I'll just call it x, um, you have to take two logarithms and divide them. The first logarithm is the log base a of x, right? Same x is over here and then divide by log base a of the, the base that we want is b, right? So this is the change of base formula. Very useful, right? It's, it's one that you should know, but um, let's just stipulate, you know, you can look it up, of course. It's in the book. Um, but ideally, th this is one you should know because it's, it's going to come in very handy. So what was the question we wanted? It was way up here. I'll copy it down again, right? We wanted to solve the equation 3 to the x equals 64. <clears throat> and we used this conversion, right? This conversion here to write it as a logarithm, right? So our x is just log base 3 of 64. And now we want to put this in our, in our calculator, right? Well, I can't do it, right? I have to do the change of base formula. So, so b, is, b is 3 still, right? B is 3, and my x is 64. So what's a? What's a going to be here? What are, what are my a's going to be? Well, they can be anything you want, right? They can be any legitimate base, and we'll talk about what the possibilities for the base later, 
But for now, a is a number that I can plug in on my calculator. So I can do either 10 or e. So let's do 10 because you know 10 is a nicer number. Right? So I'm going to say a is 10. Right? So you can always use a equals 10 when using your calculator to calculate these logarithms. Uh, you know, base 3, for example. So this is going to be a fraction now. It's going to be log base 10, because that's the a here, of x, which is 64, divided by log base 10 of 3. So, so how does this look on your calculator? Well, depending on your calculator, uh, it could look like this, right? It's going to be LOG, and it's not going to put the 10 in there, so let's just write LOG of 64. Close the parentheses, right? Close the parentheses. Um, or if it doesn't have parentheses, you should use parentheses here, right? Then divide, so then hit the division button. Then do log, hit, so hit LOG for, for log. L-O-G, and then you put in uh, the 3, because that's the one in the denominator, right? Then you hit enter, and it's going to spit out. Hang on, i gotta, I got to do this my, myself. All right, so, um, yeah, my calculator says that this is 3.785578521, and so on, right? I mean... This is not exact. This is a very good approximation. For our purposes, remember, we want to round to four decimal places, right? So we're only going to take one, two, three, four decimal places. So this seven rounds this up to a six. Okay. So this is approximately 3.7856 to four decimal places. You know, and read the book carefully, right? If the directions say three decimal places, then it would be 3.786, right? If it's two decimal places, it would be 3.79 and so on. Uh, but four decimal places, the 7856 are the four decimal places here, okay? And if you remember, that was our guess, right? So this is, originally we said it, it was about uh, 3.7, so that was pretty close, but it's 3.7. 856, 856, I'm writing over myself here, to be more precise, right? But we were never going to guess that, right? So that's why we have a calculator to give us, you know, a much more precise answer. Not exact, right? Remember, this is not exact. This is approximate, right? What is the exact? Well, that's this up here, right? That's log base 3 of 64. That's the symbol that represents the exact number, and this is the approximate to the exact. In a very, very much the same way that the cube root of 7 is a symbol that represents a number that's approximately 1.9129. So here, log base 3 of 64, right, this right here, is the exact number, and the approximate is 3.7856. Okay, so I hope that helps. And for now, let's, let's just do some examples of using our calculator to approximate uh, various logarithms. All right, so this is example, I want to say example 5. Yep, example 5. Oh, I need that. Um, all right, so let's approximate... Um, to, again, four decimal places. Forgive the sloppiness. Let's just do log of 72,100. Okay. Now, notice I didn't write a base here. Well, if you don't see a base, remember what that means. No base means it's a 10. Okay, so... If you want, you can put stick a little 10 in here and then do 72,100, right? So what is that approximately? Well, the nice thing is if it's base 10, you don't need to use this formula here. All you have to do is on your calculator, hit the log button, the one that's next to the 7, and then put in 71,000, sorry about that, 72,100. And your calculator just says that this is um, 
five, seven, nine. And then we don't need the three, five, and so on because we're rounding to four decimal places, right? So that's the answer. That's the approximate answer, right? Okay, um, let's do another one. Let's do ln, right, natural log of 0 0.0. 0.052. So natural log of 0 0.052. Right. So we're, we're going to use our calculator, but before we do that, let's re just recognize that this is the same as log base e of 0 0.52. Oop, sorry, 0 0.052. 0 0.052. Okay, good. Okay, so for that, we just need the ln button. Right? You just need the ln button, which is underneath your um, log button, so it's next to the 4. And my calculator says that this is approximately negative 2.9565. Again, four decimal places, right? Okay. Yep, and that's all it is. All right, one more. Oh, yes, so a logarithm can be a negative number. We'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. So example 7, yep, let's do, let's, let's go back to log base 10, and let's do negative uh, 63, right? Because I think we did, we did positive 64, so let's do log of negative 63. So, right, you can write this as log base 10 of negative 63, and plug it in your calculator. So it, when you hit enter, you get an error, right? You get an error. Something went wrong, right? And it it's probably says something about domain error, right? It's not in the domain. So, so the answer here is not error. That's not the answer. The answer is that this is not a number. It's undefined. It's undefined, right? Well, for our purposes, it's undefined. It actually, it is a, an imaginary number, but we're not going to get into that. For our, for our purposes, let's just keep it as simple as possible. This is undefined, right? So you cannot take the log of a negative number. And it turns out you cannot take the log of zero either, right? So example eight, the log of zero, you can try that. That's also undefined. You get an error, right? Well, your calculator says it's an error, but that means it's undefined. It's not a number. Okay, so yeah, so later on we're going to talk about the log as a function, and then we'll see that, right, the domain of that function are only positive numbers. So, so up here, 72,000, that's a positive number. 0 0.052, it's, it's a small number, but it's still positive, right? But negative numbers and zero are not allowed inside the logarithm. Okay, so I want to do one more because... Um, what happens if we're taking, let's say, log base uh, base 12 of the number 0 0.3? Log base 12 of 0 0.3. Okay, so for that, you can't just use your log button or your ln button because this is base 12, not 10, and not e, right? So for this, we have to use the change of base formula, right? And the way it works is, oops, sorry, I'll get to that in a second. The way it works is this, right? You're going to take a fraction. It's going to be a fraction. And in the numerator, you're just going to use log base 10 of 0 0.3. And in the denominator, you're going to use the same base 10 of, but this time you use the base 12. Right? So plug that in your calculator, and you'll get an approximation. Okay, so I hope everybody got negative 0 0.4845. Yep, I think that's it. Yep. Now, remember, there's nothing wrong with the negative number here because that's the answer. We didn't take the log of negative 0 0.3. In fact, you can't do that. You can try that, but that's undefined. So you're, you can take the log of a positive number, and you can get a positive number, a negative number, right? You can even get zero. 
Um, oh, I'm out of space here. So I'll just mention that if you take the log of 1, right, you get 0. And we'll explain why this is in a minute. But So, so you can get a negative number for an answer, but uh, you cannot take the log of a negative number like I did here in example 7. That did not work, right? So, so I hope that helps. Okay, so... Right, so what is a logarithm, right? A logarithm of a number, right, is a number, n, and it's the exponent of b that gives you n, right? So, so in fact, and for some problems, for very simple problems, you don't need your calculator, right? Let's just do one more example. I think we're up to examples, oh no, example 8, 9, uh, let, let's call it 9. So suppose you want to solve the equation... Um, 4 to the power x is equal to 16. Right, so 4 raised to what power is 16? So this is one that I'm hoping you can pretty much just guess what the answer is, right? You, I mean, 4 times 4 is 16, but 4 times 4 is 4 to the power 2. So this exponent here had better be 2, right? 4 to the 2 the 4 is 16. So just by guessing, we know that x is 2. Right? Yep. So yeah, no, no logarithms needed here. However, let's, let's use this conversion and see what we get, right? If we have 4 to the x equals 16, then what does this say about it, right? So remember, n is x, n is x, b is 4, 4, and m is 16. So this says that, oops, sorry, x, because that's the n, is equal to log base b, but b is 4, of the number 16. Okay. So there's our answer, right? Log base 4 of 16 is x. Now you might think, but wait a minute, I thought, I thought the answer was 2. Well, yes, right? It is. It's both. Right? So just to make this clear here, Right? I can write this as 2. So log base 4 of 16 is just the number 2. Right? It's just another way to write the number 2. Right? So yeah, log, you don't have to have decimals here. It doesn't have to be you know, 2.8196 like we were getting uh, just a few minutes ago. It can be a whole number. Right? You know. Uh, you know, to, to use an analogy, remember, you can have the square root of... Uh, 29, and this is not a, a nice number. It's, a, it's one of those, uh, you know, repeating decimals. Um, it's about 5.385. 5.385. Oh, I guess to be consistent, let's use four decimal places, so 5.3852, right? So that's approximate. But if you take the square root of 25, you just get 5 exactly. It doesn't have to be a decimal, right? So this symbol, the square root of 25, is the same as 5, in much the same way that this symbol here, the log base 4 of 16, just represents this number 2. That's all, right? It's just another way to write the number 2. Uh, maybe a, a, a clunky, clumsy way to write it, but it's, it's 2, right? I mean, you can say the square root of 25 is just a, a, you know, a really weird way to write the number 5 but it, it's just an equivalent way to write it, okay? Okay, and maybe we'll do another example. Let's do example 10 now. I'll make it very similar, right? So 4 to the x is equal to 1 over 16. Okay. Now, this might not be obvious, right? This one you have to think about a little bit. Uh, just because, well, you might guess, well, I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, it, maybe it's obvious to some of you, but it's not obvious to me, right? So what could the answer be here? Right? Well, let's think about 1 over 16. If you remember um, that this is, right, this is not negative 16. It's 16 to the power negative 1, right? So we can write 1 over 16 as 16 to the negative 1. Because right, a negative exponent just means you take the reciprocal and you flip it over, right? 
But remember, 16 is also 4 squared, so it's 4 to the power 2 to the power negative 1. But by the rules of exponents, what's 2 times negative 1? It's just negative 2. So this is the same thing as 4 to the negative 2. But there you go, right? Well, what's the exponent of 4 that gives you 1 over 16? The exponent of 4 is this negative 2, right? So, kind of, you know, just basically guessing, we're guessing that x is negative 2. And let's check. If I take 4 to the negative 2, what is that? Well, you can use your calculator, but it's 1 over 4 to the positive 2, or 1 over 16, which is what we wanted, right? So, so this is correct. All right. So remember, this does not, this does not in any way uh, indicate that you cannot take the log of a negative number. You can get a negative number for your answer, right? So if we did this the, the long way, in other words, using the, using the definition of log, we would get that x is log base 4 of the number 1 over 16. And you can put that in your calculator, and it'll just spit out negative 2. Right? So again, this logarithm, log base 4 of 1 over 16, is a negative number. right? But don't get mixed up with trying to take the log of negative 16. You might think, well, that's negative 2, but no. This is not a number. This is undefined. OK? So yeah, don't get mixed up with taking the logarithm of a negative number. In other words, the argument here, the thing you're taking the log of, is negative. That can't happen, right? Because what you're taking the logarithm of here is a small number, but it is positive, right? There's no, it's not negative 1 over 16, right? It's positive 1 over 16. But what you get then is a negative number for your answer. Okay, so... So here's the idea of the law, right? So remember, this thing here, way up here, this is, the, this is the key. This is crucial to solving, well, most of the problems that you're going to do in, in the rest of Chapter 4, right? In 4.4, 4.5, 4.6, we need to know this conversion. So I'm going to write it down again because we're going to use that a lot here. Right? So here it is again. b to the n equals m is the same thing as n equals log base b of m. Okay. Very important. you got to know it backwards and forwards. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to treat, right, cause you might be wondering why am I not using x and y? Because I think the book just uses x and y here. Um, personally, I find that confusing. Um, I, I prefer to use generic letters like n and m rather than x's and y's, because we're going to be switching those over and over again. And I think that might be a little confusing. So we're going to start with a function. f of x is equal to 2 to the x. Right? Now, this is something that we, we looked at way back in, uh, in well, way back in 4.2, the which is the video right before this, the section right before this. right? But it was on your previous test, so you, you may have forgotten the 2 to the x by now. But here it is, right? This is an exponential function, right? This is your, your, your b to the x, right? So b is 2 here, right? b is 2, right? And if you want to know what this looks like, um, we'll draw the graph in a little bit. But remember that the, the domain of this function, right? The domain is all real numbers because the exponent can be negative, right? But the range well, the range are only positive numbers. You're only going to get positive numbers here. One of the other properties of these exponential functions is that they are one-to-one. -one. And I know we talked about that quite a bit in, in section 4.1, so you might want to review 4.1. But in 4.2, we mentioned that, yeah, these are one-to-one. These are -one. I think we looked at the graph and said they satisfy the horizontal line test or something like that, right? But what that means as a practical matter is this. When an exponential function is 1 to 1, um, you can find the inverse, right? So we're going to find the inverse, f inverse of x. So what is the inverse of this function 2 to the x? 
Okay, so remember how that goes, right? Step one, we're going to replace f of x here with the symbol y. We're going to write it as y equals 2 to the x. Okay. Step two, switch the x's and y's. So change the, the y to an x, and then this, x, this exponent of here, this x, now becomes a y. Step three, right, solve for y. So we have 2 to the y equals x. How do I find y? Well, up until just a few minutes ago, this would be impossible. There's no way to do it, right? This is an exponent, right? But now we know how to solve for the exponent. Way up here, right, we have b to the n equals m. So I should change colors here, right? My n is just y, so let's write that down. n is y. My b is this number 2, and my m is just this number x. Well, it's not, it's a variable, but m could represent a variable like x as well, right? So now, you see, we know what to do with this. In fact, it's right here. It's n is just log base b of m. So now we know what to do with this. How do we solve for y? y is n. That's going to equal log base b, right? But what's b here? b is 2. So base 2 of m. What's m? m is x. Right? So that's what this inverse function is here, right? It's going to be log base 2 of x. So what is a logarithm? Well, it's an exponent, right? But in particular, it's the inverse of the exponential function. Okay, so to make that clear, let's go way down here. We're going to write f of x as b to the x, right? And then the inverse of that, in other words, what undoes the exponential function? What's the thing that undoes the exponential? It's the logarithm, base b of x. Okay, so now we're thinking about the logarithm as a function of x. So what are some properties of this function? Uh, well, the first thing is the domain and range, right? What's the domain and range? If you remember way back in 4.1, we said that when you find the inverse, you switch the domain and range around, right? So now the, the domain will be 0 to infinity. And the range of the logarithm will be negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers. Right? So, right, so by domain, remember, what we mean is all the numbers that you're allowed to plug in for x. What are we allowed to plug in for x? Well, as we saw earlier, not negative numbers. Right? We're not allowed to plug in, say, negative 16. And we're not allowed to plug in 0 either. Right? So we're allowed to plug in only numbers x that are greater than 0, right? This is another way to write from 0 to infinity, right? x is greater than 0. Now, the y can be anything. y can be any number, any real number, any real number, positive or negative, right? And in fact, we got negative answers for y, right? Negative 2 was our y. That's our negative number, right? All right. So, so yeah, so, so we're thinking about the, the logarithm as the inverse of the exponential, and conversely, the exponential is the inverse of the logarithm, right? They're, two, they're just inverse functions. And maybe the, the next thing we should do is graph them to see how, they're, how the inverses are related. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to pull up the graphs of 2 to the x and log base 2 of the x in just a second. Okay, so here in blue here, um, I graphed f of x equals 2 to the x. Okay, so that graph should look familiar because we, we did that. We did that earlier. Um, and then I graphed the logarithm function, and that's this one in green here, kind of dark green, right? And so you can see the, the relationship between the two graphs, right? They're basically symmetric over this, this little diagonal line here, this line, this is just the line y equals x, right? So this is, this line here is just 
y equals x. And there, it's kind of flipped over that. So if you tilt your head a little bit, you can see that these are symmetric, right? That you're just flipping one over the other, over the, over the, um, over the line y equals x, right? And another thing about inverse functions, you may have forgotten, right? So if we look at this point right about here, this point, if you look, the x-coordinate is going to be 3, and the y-coordinate will be 8. So what happens for the inverse? For the inverse um, over here, you're going to get the corresponding point here. It's going to be x equals 8, y equals 3. So notice what happens when you find the inverse. You switch the x's and y's, right? x, x was 3 for, for 2 to the x, for the f of x function. And then y is 3 for the inverse function, right? So you just get the inverse, right? And that's going to be true for all of these points, um, right? So this here will be the point um, 2, 4. And if you go across the, oops, across this line here, you get to this point. Uh, let me try that again. Because I think I messed up the line here. If you go straight across, you get to this point here, which is now x equals 4, y equals 2, although I should do that in, in green. Mm. Yep, so this point here, 4, 2 instead of 2, 4, right, and so on. Um, and maybe let's do one over here. This point here has x, an x-coordinate of negative 1, and the y-coordinate is somewhere between 0 and 1. It turns out to be 1 half. And we'll, we'll see why in a second. But if you go, if you dart across the line y equals x, you get to this point here. And this point, oops, let me try that again, has coordinates positive 1 half, right, y equals negative 1. So again, you're just switching the x's and y's. Right. So in fact, let's, let's do that here. Let's make a table uh, for x, oops. This is very hard to do a vertical line. Let me try one more time here. All right, close enough. And then my y will be 2 to the x, right? So, yep, so let's just plug in various x's. Say negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And you're going to get 1 fourth, 1 half, 1, 2, 4, and 8. So now for the inverse, Right, so if you have x, oops, hang on, ah. and then you have y, which is log base 2 of x, right, you're just switching these, right? If x is 1 fourth, y is negative 2. If x is 1 half, y is negative 1. If x is 1, y is 0. If x is 2, y is 1. If x is 4, y is 2. And if x is 8, y is 3. Um, you, can, you can even do one more, right? You can do 4 and 16. And so here it's going to be 16 and 4. Right. And so I think that gives you the idea of the logarithm being the inverse of the exponential. Right. Um, another thing to notice about the graph right, is that right, the, the graph does not extend into the negative x, right? So in other words, you cannot plug a negative number for x into the graph. Um, remember the exponential function, right? So y equals 2 to the x has a horizontal asymptote. And, you know, I don't remember mentioning that um, in section 4.2, I believe. Well, better late than never, right? So all exponential functions have horizontal asymptotes, and it's just y equals 0. It's just the x-axis, right? y equals 0. So for the logarithm function then, right? so y equals log base 2 of x, this has a vertical asymptote, but no horizontal one. And abbreviate. And it's just the y-axis, right? It's x equals 0. Okay, and in fact, remember, a graph can never cross a vertical asymptote, so it's not going to cross, right, this graph. It'll get very close, and you can see way down here, it's, it's very close to the y-axis, but it's not quite there. 
if you zoom in, right, if you zoom in here, uh, oh, I lost it. Right, let's say this is the y-axis. Uh, the graph will just get very, very close to it, but it'll never get there, right? So that's what happens if you, if you zoom in. Okay, um, yeah, so exponential functions, horizontal asymptote, uh, vertical asymptote for logarithm functions. And, well, I, I know we're, I'm kind of stretching it here, but let's talk a, a, about a few properties of the logarithm function um, before we end this video here. So just some properties that are, you're going to, you want to get familiar with, right? So these are just properties. of the function f of x equals log base b of x. Uh, you know, b could be 2, but it could be 3 or 10 or even e, right? So uh, first of all, we already mentioned the domain and range. So the domain is only positive numbers, right? Not including 0. And the range, all real numbers. Right? All right. Um, but what else, right? If we take the log base b, so I'll call this property 1, right? If we take the log of 1, we always get 0. And the reason for that is if you convert it to an exponential function, uh, you get b to the 0 equals 1, right? Remember, b, b to any power is 1. So the log of 1 will always be 0, and that's true for any base, right? Um, right. What's log base b of b itself? Well, let's think about that, right? So what is the exponent? What is the exponent of b that gives you b? Well, b is just b to the 1, so the exponent has to be 1, right? So this is just going to be 1 now, right? right? What if I take log base b of b, but b to a power? Let's say b to the power x. Right? What's that going to be? Well, this is almost as trivial, right? b to what power x equals b to the x? Well, it's got to be x, right? So this is just equal to x. In other words, the logarithm just undoes the exponential, right? It basically calculates the exponent, right? So this logarithm just undoes the exponent, right? It's just like if you take x and you divide by 2, and then you multiply by 2, you just get back x, right? Because multiplying by 2 is the inverse of dividing by 2, and vice versa, right? So the, the inverse of the exponential function is the log function, right? They are inverse functions, way up here, yeah, way up here, inverse functions, right? So they undo each other, they undo each other, and you just get back x, right? Um, what else? So... The logarithm function is also one-to-one, -one, and you can look at the graph and see it, it satisfies the horizontal line test. So every horizontal line, oh, I shouldn't use yellow. Um, yep, every horizontal line crosses the graph only once to mess up the graph, right? So it's one-to-one, -one. and what that means as a practical matter is this. If I take log base b of x, and if that happens to equal log base b of y, I can conclude that x has to equal y, right? That these things have to be equal, right? Now, I hope you're not thinking, well, that's obvious because I can divide both sides by log base b. No, 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 no. Don't do this ever, 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 right? This is very bad. You cannot divide by logarithms. It just doesn't work, right? So don't ever think that. So I know that's what this looks like, but that's not what you're doing here, right? That's not what you're doing. Um, to, to draw an analogy, in, 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 uh, in 4.2, we talked about the fact that the exponential function was one-to-one, -one, right? So if b to the x equals b to the y, we can conclude that x has to be y. But you're not dividing by b, right? If you divide b to the x by b, 
you don't get x, right? What you get is b to the x minus 1. You just subtract the exponents, right? So no, you're not dividing by b here. Likewise, you're not dividing by logarithm, okay? So both the exponential function and the, and the, uh, and the logarithm function are one-to-one. -one. And that means as a practical matter, well, you're not dividing by log, but you can effectively cancel it on both sides, right? Just like you're canceling the b's here. Maybe that's a, a sloppy way to think of it, but it works. It, you can do that, okay? All right, so yeah, logarithm is one to one, and that just means that effectively you can drop the logs on both sides. Okay, um, one more property. So I'll call this property five, and I guess I gotta squeeze it in here now. Um, uh, you know what, hang on. Yeah, I'm just, I just cleared some space. So, right, so property five, right? Right here, either or here, it doesn't matter. Um, just says the following, right? If I take b, and now I make the exponent into a logarithm, base b, right, of x, that, again, the exponent and the, and the logarithm, they cancel each other out. So you should just get back x. Now the difference with this and number three, you notice three is very similar, but it's just in the opposite order. You do the, the exponent first and then the logarithm. This says you take the log first and then the exponent. So there's a slight difference here is that you're taking the log of x, and remember, x can't be negative. So this is only going to work for x positive, x greater than 0, right? So, yep, you can use this property as long as you remember x has to be positive. You can use this property here. This works for any x, positive or negative. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's it. The other property um, is the change of base property, but we talked about that already uh, much earlier in the video, the change of base formula. So, so I think um, I think I'm going to leave it at that for now, and I think in the next video we'll look at a couple more examples.